13 years, our celebrity chef is the owner and executive chef of the Bunnell's Restaurant Group, which includes the namesake classic Bunnell's Fine Texas Cuisine and the newest highly acclaimed Waters, Bunnell's Coastal Cuisine, and the nationally recognized sports bar, Buffalo Brothers Pizza Wings and Subs. In addition, Chef Bunnell is also the celebrity chef of TCU's Amon G. Carter Stadium for all Horn Frog football games. He's also the author of three full-color cookbooks available here at ZestFest. His two fine dining restaurants are currently ranked in the top five for the entire Metroplex by the Zagat Survey, and Buffalo Brothers was listed as one of the top ten college sports bars in the nation. Not only a chef, this guy is also the father of two, married to an Aggie, and is a competitive distance runner and triathlete in races ranging from 5K all the way to 140.6 miles Ironman races. You've seen him on the Food Network. You've seen him on CBS today. Now he's here. Would you please welcome to ZestFest, Chef John Bunnell. Thank you very much. Man, I hope all that's true. All right, we got some fun stuff. Welcome all you rookies to ZestFest, new vendors this year. Welcome back to all the repeat offenders, the usual suspects as well. Starting off to be a good show. I've been walking the floor, seeing a lot of familiar faces and new guys as well. Really glad ZestFest is back around. This is one of my favorite things to do every year because this is where the flavor is. It's not bland fest, we're talking ZestFest. Lots of fun, lots of big, bold spice and flavor. Today I thought we'd uh, stick with a little bit of a Mardi Gras theme. Texans are neighborly. We like the folks from Louisiana quite a bit. We like to sneak over to New Orleans whenever we can. And Mardi Gras is just one of those things, if you've ever been, that uh, you may not remember it, but you'll never get over it. We're gonna do some blackened redfish. I got some Mardi Gras grits. Think of cheese grits with all kinds of good stuff in them. And I'm gonna make you a little jalapeno and crawfish cream sauce to go over the top of it. For those of you who've been to any of my restaurants, you know that grits are just a part of my soul. I think if you, if you cut me open, I'd bleed grits for a while. This is some of my favorite stuff in the world. Grits can be fine dining, grits can be just breakfast. Grits are phenomenal. We're gonna start by making what I call the Mardi Gras grits. And I came up with this, it's sort of like a play on dirty rice meets uh, cheese grits. It's pretty fun. We're gonna start off here in the pan. Got a nice hot pan, just a little bit of oil, and we're gonna brown up a little bit of uh, andouille sausage. Any andouille will work. We're using a bulk andouille, not the stuff in the casing. If you got one in a casing, pull it out of there. Cut it open, get it out. We like to make our own andouille. If you don't make your andouille, that's okay. You should, but you don't have to. I'll be happy to sell you some. Lots of folks will be happy to sell you some. The first thing we're gonna do is just start breaking that up and browning it, cutting it down a little bit. I'm gonna get that nice and hot. Once that starts to render, it starts giving off a lot of its own flavor. We're making this with pork today. Speaking of pork, we're also gonna add in some tasso. If you've never had tasso, it's just one of the coolest ingredients. It's a great way to add tons of flavor, texture, a little something extra to lots of different stuff. Anytime you could use prosciutto, add tasso and you're adding something even more. Prosciutto is just a really salted ham. Tasso is a pork shoulder, but instead of just being salted, it's cured with a full New Orleans kind of Creole blend and then it's also smoked. We cube it up. You could use bacon if you want. Tasso is just one of my favorite ingredients. Little andouille sausage, a little bit of tasso. We're trying to brown it up. Once it starts to render, we're gonna brown it up and break it up just a little bit. And as those get going, they start smelling good already. That's what we're here for, right? To stink the joint up right. Now, once those start breaking apart, giving off a little bit of their own fats, a little bit of their own juices, we're gonna add in some onions and poblano pepper. Don't worry, I'm making plenty. Everybody always starts looking nervous when they see the portion size that we're making up here and then they start counting heads and seeing how close they are to the line before they're gonna try to run over some kids to get, you know, be at least third in line. I'm making plenty here today, don't worry about it. We caught more than one fish for the redfish last night. You're gonna be okay. Nobody goes hungry on my watch. 
All right. Now there's a lot of seasoning and a lot of flavor already in there. But again, this isn't bland fest. There's never enough. So we're gonna keep going with a little bit more of our Creole seasoning blend. Make sure that it's as flavorful as could be. I've got some garlic going in also. Got about four cloves. Oh man, it's smelling good up here. My wife always loves when I come home. She's an Aggie, you know, she's one of those cilantro haters. She's one of those that's got a real keen palate. She's always like, wait, where were you, Zest Fest? Oh, you did the grits, didn't you? It's great, I always stand right over the food. I'm marinated in this stuff by the end of the day. It's a beautiful job. All right, once these guys have really started to sweat and started to soften up, giving out all their flavors, lending flavors to each other, we've got something really flavor. I promise you, it's gonna be grits eventually. You're looking all doubtful on me here. We're gonna add in chicken stock and cream. Now, most people make grits with water. And I have a problem with that because water is, is like the absence of flavor, right? Unless the lake's turning over, you know what I'm talking about. Water doesn't give anything except just something to cook in. So instead of water, if you're making grits, we take, if it says four cups of water, I'll say two cups of chicken stock and two cups of cream. Instead of using water, chicken stock and cream add texture and they add flavor. Cream is a wonderful thing. Don't be down in heavy cream. Today's not the diet show. This is the taste good show. We'll be doing some more diet conscious stuff tomorrow. Today's the day to kind of let it go a little bit. Mardi Gras is gonna be early this year. The last weekend of Mardi Gras is Valentine's Day. Guys, you hear what I'm saying? The countdown is on, Valentine's Day. Look at your calendar. It's coming up. Fat Tuesday is right after Valentine's. Immediately, Valentine's is a Saturday this year. Get on your reservations now. I don't want you texting me day of saying I'm in trouble. You saved me a table, it's somewhere, right? Maybe, maybe at the sports bar I can get you, you know, a corner stool, but hear me guys, February 14, it's on the way before you know it. Now, I'm gonna trust you to tell me when this starts simmering. Somebody's gonna see it. All I need to do is wait for this pot to come to a simmer before we keep going with the grits. When you see it simmering, let me know. Holler, give me a yeehaw, something. While that's going, you know, if I watch it, it can't boil, that's right. So while that's going, we're gonna do a little black and red fish. If you've never had red fish, if you don't, if you don't have a, a Boudreaux in the family, you don't have anybody that can catch one for you, it's available at a lot of different stores now. Red fish was really in trouble for a while. Mr. Paul Prudhomme, one of my favorite chefs, incredible guy, his black and red fish became so popular, it swept the nation that it almost wiped out redfish as a sport fish along the Gulf Coast of Texas, Louisiana. It was so popular. It's an incredible fish, but they're pretty easy to catch. They swim in big schools, and if somebody drags a big enough net, you can get almost all of them. The good news is they made a miraculous rebound through different conservation efforts from sportsmen. Different fish and game departments have made slot limits. You can only keep them in between here and here, let a lot go back. Not to mention, in Texas, we have two different phenomenal clean, sustainable aqua farms doing redfish. You can eat all the redfish you want without hurting the wild population. If you happen to catch one in the slot, it's fantastic. I usually don't recommend aqua farm fish. Most of them come from countries and are in the kind of quality of water that I would not recommend you get within 10 miles of, especially on the downwind side. The Texas aqua farm is phenomenal. We like to use copper shoals. That's the one I deal with all the time. They're not too far from Galveston. Their quality, is phenomenal. You can get it every single day of the year. It's a great sustainable fish, good on the omega-3s, and it's just got incredible flavor. So to do a black and red fish, you got to have a nice complex seasoning blend. I'll give you my blend if you want. You can email me anytime. I keep no secrets in my kitchen whatsoever. If you send me an email and say, what was that thing you made on stage that time? I'll email it back exactly what it is, and I don't hold anything back. I used to be a teacher. I promise you I'm giving it all away. No secrets in the kitchen. I will throw that caveat on. So for this particular blackening blend, my Creole seasoning blend works really well if you just want to buy one and dust it on there. But when I blacken, I like to do an entire coating 
I mean really press it in. If you use the Creole blend, just sprinkle it. If you do a full coating on it, it's gonna be a little bit on the salty side. So we mix our own blend if we're gonna blacken fish because I like to do that full coating. We're gonna do some salt, some black pepper. I've got some cayenne. Somebody got excited, although, oh, there we go. Now we're getting somewhere. Garlic powder, onion powder. Very precise measuring on every one of these, of course. Got some chili powder. If you're not familiar with chili powders, you need to go see my friends at Pendry's. Turn in your Texas card first. If you don't know what chili powders you like, we got a problem, you're in the wrong house. I got some onion, I'm, excuse me, I got some thyme, some oregano, and some basil just for a little more complexity, just to make this a little more well-rounded. Now, easiest way to mix up your dry spice. You can get your hands in there if you want. It may make you sneeze a little bit. A whisk works really well. So I'm gonna check the grits. Thank you very much. Somebody's watching out for me, all right. Now, once this starts to simmer, that's the magic moment where we can get to our grits. Don't let me catch you opening up a pouch of anything. If it says instant, I don't need it. Stone ground grits, baby, that's what I'm talking about. I like to use the Homestead grist mill. These guys are doing it the old fashioned way with a big old water wheel. They're doing it on a huge grind. I like the yellow corn grits for this one. They've got a lot of flavor. They've got that nice little texture. They've got just, excuse me. You know, in radio they say don't pop your peas. I don't know what just happened there. I didn't feel like I said anything. But... Oh, Chef Stretch over here has got himself a megaphone. Did you steal that from the back of the cop car? They let you have that? All right. Man, it's so much fun to have hecklers in the house today. They call him Stretch because he's about four foot eight with the boots. We did a great show on the Discovery Channel called Eating the Enemy. And he came out to the ranch. We shot wild boars. We used the feral pigs that everybody wants to get rid of. And we made chili. It was a lot of fun to do. He can actually shoot. You'd be surprised. All right, once this starts to simmer, then we can start working our grits in. If you just dump them in and walk away, you're in trouble. They'll make a huge lump. Every grit needs to be surrounded by liquid, so that's why I'm whisking, then working the grits in a little at a time. We've got a really flavorful liquid. It's got tasso, it's got sausage, onions, poblanos, garlic, lots of seasoning, chicken, cream. All those flavors are working around in circles. You need every grit to get equal access to those flavors. You can't start with grits in a cold pan and then just turn it on, and you can't just dump them in there and think that it's magically gonna find its way around. You gotta be whisking while you get them in there. At least for the first minute or two, you gotta keep that whisk working. Once your grits have started to hit that temperature where they're cooking, where they're absorbing, then you can back off and let them simmer. If you're using instant grits, which I told you not to, but I know some of you are gonna do it anyway, it's okay. They'll be all right. They won't be off the charts. Don't say, well, Bon Hill made them and I thought they'd be good and try to tell, you know, tell your guests that it's my fault. But if you're using instant, this whole thing will happen in five minutes. You'll see them just thump, totally, completely soak up all your liquids. They've already been cooked, then dehydrated. I don't like that many processes. This is corn that's been ground to a certain level. That's where I want to start. Nice, heavy, full, whole ingredients. Chef, Not I got to tell processed. you. processed. That yes, as sir. a native of South Georgia, yeah, buddy. I can finally confirm, based on what you've said, that grits is plural. Grits. That there is a singular grit. You can get a grit. I can get you one grit right now. <laughs> if anyone has any questions for Chef John Bunnell, just raise your hand. We'll bring the mic over to you. No problem. So, again, if it's instant, five minutes, thump, it'll puff right up, and you've got it. Stone ground, usually it's going to take about 15 minutes. Look at that. So excited you want to stay in the whisk. Usually these will take about, about 15 minutes or so, but you'll notice when they start to soak everything up. I'm going to turn it down just a little bit. We're going to let these bubble. While that's going, we're going to get back to our redfish over on this side. So I've got some blackened seasoning. This stuff is looking good. So I'll take that fish off to the side of the plate. Get a nice full coating of our blackened seasoning. I like to take, 
what we call the presentation side of the fish. This is the pretty side. That's the back side, no big deal. That's the pretty side. That's what's gonna go face up on the plate when you're done, when you're presenting it. The nice pretty side. I'm gonna take that and press it down into all those seasonings. Give it a little pressure. You want it to stick all the way around, see that? That's what I'm talking about. We're not, we're not talking just a little sprinkle or a little dash. Blackened seasoning, I want it to be all in there, but only one side. Leave that side here. If you go too much, you pretty much, uh, you know, gotten rid of the flavor of the redfish and you're just eating your seasoning right out of the jar. One side, I'm gonna turn this pan up just a little bit. We're gonna smoke it up in here. I've got some oil. Give it one little coating, and then here we go. Right in there. As Soon as your pan gets the fish in it, give it that little shake. That's how we keep it from sticking. A non-stick pan is a wonderful thing, even if you're not using a non-stick, as long as your pan is hot, clean, and you had a little oil at the last second, right when it goes in, that little shake lets you know that it's loose. It's not right there. I mean, it's not, it's not fusing to the pan. It needs to be loose. I'm gonna get just a touch more oil. It's a bigger pan than I thought. That's how you know it's blackening. Really starting to smoke a little bit. I'm gonna cook it about a little bit past halfway. I'd say almost two thirds on one side. And you can see how the fish starts to change. You can tell when it's cooking. You can watch the texture coming up through the fish. So when I can see that it's a little over half, then I'm gonna flip it over. All right, let's keep these grits working. Every once in a while, Come back and make sure that each of your little grit guys is not stuck to the bottom of the pan. There we go. They are looking good. Chef, question. See how the, see how the texture's starting to soak it up? We're getting close here. What kind of oil in the pan with the redfish? That's a great question. If I had my choice, I would use avocado oil today. You can find it now. It used to be ungodly expensive. I don't know if you ever squeezed your own avocado, but it's hard to get oil out of, the, out of the pits. It takes a lot. Avocado oil is a lot easier to come by than it used to be. It's got really good flavor like an olive oil, and it has an extremely high smoke point, almost like peanut oil. It's a phenomenal one to use. Grapeseed oil is great. If you're on a budget and you just want to use any old reg regular canola will also work. Only thing I would avoid is extra virgin olive oil. Not that I don't love that stuff and not that it wouldn't work, but you're paying a whole lot of money that most of the flavor will go right up in smoke. It's got a low smoke point. It'll cook, but all those flavors you pay for stink up the house instead. We're just about there. Let's flip this guy over, show you what the other side looks like. Blackened, exactly what I wanted to see. When I say blackened fish, I mean you need to actually get some of those seasonings to get that really dark mahogany light black coating. It's a beautiful thing. You get this nice crust. You get all this flavor built in on one side. Now, if you just want to take a little blackened seasoning and just sprinkle your saute in fish. This is a true blackened one here. Now, you can go overboard, right? Everybody knows that you don't want to blacken the entire thing and, you know, make a piece of charcoal briquette out of it. Don't, don't get me too wrong, but that nice little bit of black, that is perfect. Last thing I'm going to do for these grits, we're gonna hit them with some cheese. I got Monterey Jack and I got cheddar and I got plenty of it. Load them up. Nice fine shred. Fold all that in. Let these grits really absorb all of it. You think there's some flavor in that pot? Yeah? Now we're talking. Hey, it's Mardi Gras, you know? Everybody uh, at Mardi Gras tends to uh, Let's say enjoy themselves quite a bit. It helps to have fats and proteins in your stomach. If you're, adult, if you're enjoying the adult beverages a little too much, that helps to kind of absorb some of the alcohol. It doesn't, doesn't give you less alcohol. It just kind of dishes it out over a long period of time. So heavy proteins and fats are good if you're uh, working the adult beverages pretty hard. But if you're going to New Orleans, I doubt that's, that's happening, you know, in, in your, in your kind of place. Can't imagine that with this crowd. These grits are just about there. I'm gonna turn them down just a little bit. Let them just finish up. All right. I'm gonna set that, set that fish off on the cutting board. 
it is done. And in this same pan, whoo, in this same pan. You know what? There's a little more oil than I want. I'm going to grab a new pan. There we go. We'll make a nice little crawfish and jalapeno cream sauce to go on top of that. How's that sound? We got a woo. I heard, a, I heard an Aggie a minute ago. Are there any Aggies out there? There's, a, you can hear the whoops. I'm, I'm not an Aggie, my wife is. I don't even try to do it anymore. I think it takes almost the full four years to get the whoop right. So I'm not, I'm not gonna try to do it for you. But you got any horned frogs out there? Somebody, surely. Let me guess, you were all on the selection committee, huh? Personally, I think Ohio State was using underinflated footballs, but that's just what I heard. That, that's just the rumor on the street. All right, so for my sauce here, pretty quick, pretty easy. Normally I'd use the same pan, but that one had a little more oil and I didn't know where to put it. I don't want to pour it right through the floor. So we get a new pan going here. We get it warmed up. Get a little bit of oil. Start with some jalapeno. You can't go wrong with some chopped jalapeno. If you want to take the heat out of your jalapenos, get out of here. Leave it in there. But if you did want to, if you take the veins and the seeds out, you'll be all right. About 90% of the heat is in the white parts of the jalapeno, not the dark green parts. Cut it in half, cut out the white veins. You can get a lot of the heat down. So if you wanted to use more jalapeno and get less heat, it is, <coughs> it is possible. We're using the full heat here. Yeah, buddy. I got a little bit of shallot going in here also. Man, this burner came to, came to cook today. A little jalapeno, a little shallot, touch of garlic. Got the makings of a good sauce already, and I got some crawfish tail meat. If you're buying crawfish, there is one word you need to know. Domestic. I'm bet, whoa, get out of there. Everybody wants in the grits. Domestic is what you want on crawfish. Just because it says Boudreaux's Cajun brand doesn't mean it wasn't from China, right? They know how to market. Look where your crawfish came from. I promise you, if you saw how they raised crawfish in other countries, you'd never touch another mud bug again. Louisiana and Texas, beautiful crawfish, great flavor. Mostly wild harvest. Beautiful stuff, I absolutely love it. Now I'm gonna give it a little bit of that Creole seasoning blend also. I'm gonna hit it with a little touch of white wine. Who likes cooking with wine? Oh yeah. Cook with beer too, you ever cook with beer? Let me show you. The best way to cook with beer, I do this almost every single time. It's the coolest trick I know with a chef's knife. There we go. All right, so once that wine reduces, thank you. I've been working on that all night. Once that wine reduces, what we usually want out of wine when we're cooking with it is just the acidity. You don't want to pour it in there and boil everything in wine. Add a nice splash, let it reduce until there's almost nothing left, until the pan is just about dry. When you're down there at the very end, you've got this beautiful acidity, and that's why I like Sauvignon Blanc for this type of dish. I want something nice and acidic, nice and tart, not a lot of vanilla and oak like you get off a of Chardonnay. Once it's almost down to nothing, and we give it some cream again. You thought we were done with the cream. Heck no. Cream makes the world a beautiful place. All right. Beautiful thing about cream is that when it reduces, it thickens up so it can make a sauce consistency all by itself. It doesn't need a lot of help. You don't need to add cornstarch or flour, any kind of thickener. Cream will thicken as it reduces on its own. Okay, let me show you how we plate this up. I'm gonna get a nice big portion of our Mardi Gras grits right in the middle of this plate. Don't be shy. There we go. 
Grits right here. Let's lay a little black and red fish right across the top. Oh, man, this is looking good. I'm going to need a little alone time backstage in about two minutes here. Then we've got some crawfish cream sauce with jalapeno reducing. That'll be ready. Sauce doesn't wait for anything else. When sauce is ready, your dish is ready. These can sit here a minute and they'll stay warm. But I wouldn't want to make the sauce and say, oh, let's just let it hang out for a while. It, 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 strange things happen when you let sauce sit too long. It's not the same. When the sauce is done, see how it starts to make those really big bubbles in there? That's how you can see it's starting to thicken. When it really thickens up, it gets a different look and a different texture. Let's see. That'll work. When we take our sauce, we go right over the top. Make sure you're not getting stingy with the jalapenos or the crawfish. That's what it's here for. Crawfish, jalapeno, cream sauce, black and red fish, Mardi Gras grits. I want to finish the whole thing off with a little bit of freshly torn cilantro right over the top. If you like a squeeze of lime, you could do it too. That is a meal fit for a Mardi Gras king right there. If you'd like to come see me at the booth, I'm right behind the camera over here. I got some fun stuff. We've got three different cookbooks that I'll be autographing if you'd like one. And I've got four different spice blends. You're welcome to taste any of them. The sampling line is over here. We've got plenty. Please don't hurt anybody heading up that way. I hope you guys have had a fun time at the show so far. Don't hurt yourself. Taste a little of everything. If they ask you to sign a waiver, think twice. <laughs> Y'all have fun at Zest Fest. Appreciate you coming. How about a big hand for Chef John Bunnell? He's fantastic. Bunnell's fine Texas cuisine and Bunnell's Waters Coastal Cuisine. Incredible places. And the Buffalo Brothers Sports Bar that you can't go wrong at any of them. Chef Bunnell will be over at his booth later. Sampling going on right now with the sampling table. Eddie Dean. Oh, yeah, the pit master himself, the philosopher himself, will be on the Celebrity Chef stage coming up at 5 o'clock here at Zest Fest.